Thanks for selecting this video. My name is Don Wurtzman. I recently published two books. One is The Daughters of Ishtar, a thriller about a contemporary spiritual group with roots from a pre-biblical matriarchal society, which aims to re rework all mankind. The second is the gyroverse, to be discussed here a non-fiction book on an original theory that unifies all physics and explains many of the anomalies that have stymied the physics community. A little over a hundred years ago, physics took a very unfortunate turn. It went from being a physical science, as the name implies, where it was couched in terms of how nature worked to being mostly mathematical with almost no regard to how nature behaved. The gyroverse theory takes physics back to the physical, thereby modifying many aspects of the current accepted physics theory. Now I will discuss one of the most important aspects of this theory, structure and evolution of the universe. Understanding it will go a long way in understanding everything else. Starting from the Big Bang, I will progress through the expansion of the universe to the present time. To aid the discussion, I am using the following chart. That's me at the bottom right. The chart depicts the universe from the Big Bang to the present. While it is drawn in two dimensions, it represents four space dimensional view of the universe. The revelation that the universe has four space dimensions is new with this theory. Each of the concentric circles represents the universe at billion light year intervals. The circle labeled 14 depicts the universe today, 14 billion light years after the Big Bang. The one labeled 1 represents the universe as it was 1 billion years after the Big Bang, and so on. As the universe expands, galaxies get further from each other in proportion to their distance apart, making it appear that empty space is, space is being created, as assumed in current theory. The entire universe is on the surface of an expanding four-dimensional ball, sometimes called a three-sphere. The expansion direction represents one space dimension, and each circle represents the three-dimensional universe as it was in its respective epoch. The expansion velocity c is all matter the kinetic energy mc squared. Matter just moving in a radial direction is at its minimum kinetic energy level. Hence, matter itself is not intrinsically energy in another form. In fact, the expansion energy is what fuels all the energy in the universe. This, uni this drawing can be viewed as a time slice of the universe. It depicts not just the universe today, but also its form way back to the Big Bang. The center of the concentric circle is where the Big Bang happened 14 billion years ago. Interestingly, the location of the Big Bang is made up of four space dimensions, which is very roomy even though it is tiny. Strange as it may seem, every atomic particle in the universe could have occupied that space with no two touching each other. But that needs to be discussed in another day. For now, focus on the three objects depicted on, depicted on a blue dotted line. On the far left is Earth, now 14 billion light years after the Big Bang. Just above the center of the chart is the galaxy Val, 
shown when the universe was only 3 billion light years old. And to the right of the Big Bang location is a galaxy A, showing where it was about six tenths of a billion light years after the Big Bang. The blue dotted line is the path of light coming from Abe and Val to Earth. The look back to Val is approximately 11 billion years and to Abe is approximately 13.4 13, 13 billion years ago. The light from Abe reached Val about 11 billion years ago and then together with the light from Val continued to Earth. Notice that the red dotted curve connects Abe to Earth. In effect, light from Abe reached Earth along the red line as well as the blue line. In other words, it is possible to see Abe from opposite directions. In fact, any galaxy old enough on the other side of the universe can be viewed from opposite directions and maybe even from multiple directions. Interestingly, in principle, it should be possible to prove the theory using that fact. But an object that far away is very faint and not easy to identify, especially viewing it from different directions. In addition, the distortion caused by lensing necessary to view such a distant object would, look at, would make it look very different in different directions. There would have to be something very unique about the galaxy or its cluster to be able to identify it from different directions. The path that light took was determined on the one hand as photons travel on the surface of the universe shell at the speed of light and on the other hand, as the surface of the shell is likewise expanding at the speed of light. When both items are added to the fact that the universe is presently 14 billion years old, the equation for the path of a light beam can be readily derived. On the left bottom of the chart are the resulting logarithmic spiral equations for the red and blue light beams. Notice that if those equations are continued back in time, they clearly would circle the universe many times. So in the earlier years, all radiation circled the universe much more often. For example, when the universe was just one hour old, radiation from any place would have gotten everywhere else in less than 25 hours. Or, similarly, when the universe was 1,000 years old, it would have gotten everywhere else in less than 25,000 years. So, unlike current theory, it isn't strange that the cosmic microwave background from all over the universe is the same. There was ample time for the temperature throughout the universe to stabilize prior to the formation of atoms some 400,000 years after the Big Bang, when the cosmic microwave background originated. The speed of light on the surface of the ball, or the universe, is the same as the expansion speed. Just as with special relativity, the speed of matter is restricted to the speed of light. In the gyroverse, it's limited by the universe expansion speed, which happens to be the speed of light. A photon is actually made up of matter, whose rest mass is very tiny, but is dispatched with a relatively large amount of energy to have it bump, bump up against the light speed barrier. In other words, photons don't quite travel at the speed of light. The lower frequencies travel slower, but the speed difference is not yet measurable. If it were, the photon's rest mass could be calculated.
Notice that the path that light takes is curved, hence longer. That is the reason far off galaxies appear fainter than expected, which is mistakenly suggestive of an accelerated expansion. Also notice that since all matter is on the surface of the ball, gravity between objects happens orthogonal to the expansion direction. Consequently, gravity did not slow the expansion appreciably. This enabled the expansion to be more gradual and uniform, and less of a bang. All the particles tended to stay on the surface of the sphere for two reasons. First, the mass of expansion is the same as the mass of inertia, so that the expansion speed for all matter was the same. In addition, if any stayed, the gravity of all the others would pull them back onto the surface. Consequently, the expansion was self-correcting. To summarize, the universe started out as a microscopic four-dimensional bag of atomic particles that fit easily into it. The Big Bang expanded, eventually reaching the speed of light. Gravity ensured that all particles would remain on the expanding surface. During the 4,000 years before atoms were formed, all the particles were in close enough contact to have equalized their temperature. Once atoms were formed, slight density variations allowed matter to congeal into galaxies, which lodge voids between them. Galaxies that form less than about six tenths of a billion years after the Big Bang can be seen from anywhere in the universe, and perhaps from more than one direction. The speed of matter is limited to the universe expansion speed, but that requires understanding the 12-dimensional outside view of the universe. And light is just a very small particle dispatched with relatively large amount of energy with its velocity limited to the speed of light. Interestingly, the same particle that causes gravity also causes the expansion. But I'm sorry to say that that understanding requires understanding the gravitational mechanism, which will be discussed in a subsequent video. Thanks for watching. This is Don Wurtzman signing off.